In a letter to the American tax slaves, U.S. Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu, the loon, has presented his plan to replace some of the images on the dwindling 20, 10, and $5 Federal Reserve notes. Slave emancipator Harriet Tubman will replace Andrew Jackson on the 20, leaders of the suffrage movement will go on the $10 bill, and images of the Lincoln Memorial will go on the 5. You'd think with the U.S. government being $19 trillion in debt, they'd have bigger priorities than artwork. The U.S. government can't pay what it owes any more than its indebted citizens can. Something like 50 million people are on food stamps, and most of the rest don't have a dollar in the bank to tide them over once things get worse. And they will. Just wait until the dollar crashes for good. Loon wants to inspire Americans and make them feel better about their currency. And sadly, it's working. In the dumbed-down populace, they care more about who is on the money than understanding what money is. But his PR campaign is just more window dressing and propaganda written on a dying, archaic, barbaric piece of paper. Considering that the dollar is the most widely used currency in terrorist financing, illegal arms sales, and drug trafficking, Loon should probably be working on ways to outlaw the dollar rather than dress it up. China and other major countries are running away from the dollar as fast as they can. China just created its own one gold price fix. It's not going to be convertible into dollars either. And Hungary just made its first debt offering in Wan. But Lu the Loon has the solution. New pictures. Surely the Chinese might consider holding on to them if they've got some great new graphics. In a letter that accompanies the press release, he goes on and on about the millions of responses he's received. People feel great about changing the look of the script they are forced to use on the tax farm. Too bad they're not improving its solvency. It actually makes sense to move Andrew Jackson to the back of the $20 bill. In fact, Jackson was the Ron Paul of the 19th century and was responsible for shutting down the U.S.'s second central bank. He'd likely be disgusted his face adorns the script of the third and worst central bank of the U.S., the Federal Reserve. Meanwhile, Alexander Hamilton, who was a driving force behind creating a strong, tyrannical federal government, including a central bank, remains on the $10 bill. It's fitting that Hamilton remains on the dollar since he is largely responsible for the disaster it has and will become. But being huge Harriet Tubman fans here at the Dollar Vigilante, we have mixed feelings about her being the new face of the $20 bill. We'd certainly much rather look at her face than any of the other dead criminals printed on the other bills. In fact, she is the only one who wasn't a criminal. Harriet was something we don't have anymore, male or female. An incredibly brave person who helped free slaves against a tyrannical system. She absolutely was a hero. We hope this is the image they use, but we doubt it. She's best known for her wise statement, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. That statement has never been more true than today. In fact, slavery never ended in the US. Instead of ending black slavery, they just ended up making everyone a slave. After all, if slavery is having 100% of your productivity stolen from you against your will, at what percent is it not slavery? The answer, of course, is zero. But it seems around 50% is enough to make people feel free in the land of the free nowadays. And so people will cheer a black woman being on the $20 bill, but not realize that she lost the battle and they are the ones who now don't even realize they are slaves. Here at the Dollar Vigilante, we consider ourselves the digital version of Tubman today, carrying on her tradition and trying to free slaves. But as she said, most don't even know they are. In that sense, having Tubman on the $20 bill is sad irony. Truthfully, the only thing that they could print on the dollar that we would get excited about is this. We're not holding our breath for that to happen. So in the meantime, we are getting rid of all these Federal Reserve notes as quickly as possible, no matter whose face is printed on them, for precious metals and Bitcoin. And as I've talked about in the past few days, not only is the dollar on its last legs, but gold and silver are finally starting to reach better valuations against the US dollar's crumbling currency. Money metals are obviously going to play an important role in the transition of the world from the dollar to something else. And in this Jubilee year, 2016, we can already see this trend starting to take place. Gold and silver are moving up powerfully. In fact, as I speak, silver has just opened and spiked higher above $17.60 in Asia. That means our portfolio, managed by senior analyst Ed Bugos, is skyrocketing yet again. Here are a few of today's happy TDV subscriber comments from our private subscriber-only Facebook page. As David mentioned, our returns have been ridiculously good in the last year, but we think it is just the beginning. If you want to view Ed's insights for yourself, 
please subscribe to our Dollar Vigilante newsletter at dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. This is a once in a lifetime event that is occurring and it has nothing to do with the faces that Loon wants to put on US currency. Subscribe today and join us as we continually position ourselves to profit from the ongoing collapse. We're not fooled by the false strength of the dollar or the new faces with their false histories. We look past all that and try to see what's really going on. And don't forget about Bitcoin. It spiked higher again too. If you want to learn why it might go up massively this year, check out this link. In the meantime, how about the mainstream media prostitutes take this opportunity to ask Jacob Liu why there is a Masonic Illuminati all-seeing eye pyramid on the back of the $1 bill? Now that would be something I'd like to hear him try to answer. In the meantime, he can keep painting new pictures on the dollar, and we'll keep profiting from its destruction.